at our house, we love celebrating St. Patrick's Day. However, this year, it kind of snuck up on us. So if you're like me and you want to make something special for St. Patrick's Day for yourself or for your family, but you don't have a lot of time, then I've got you covered. In today's video, I'm sharing lots of fun and festive treats, snacks, and lunch ideas that are perfect to throw together last minute. All of these ideas are super simple and they don't take a ton of ingredients to make. I'm Jennifer and welcome to The Family Fudge. On this channel, I love sharing easy ideas that can make every day special and I hope to inspire you to make life sweet. First up is one of the easiest but special breakfasts that you can make for St. Patrick's Day. This is perfect for picky eaters or if your morning is really busy and you don't have a lot of time to cook. All you need to get is one box of Lucky Charms cereal, any variety will do. And of course, Lucky Charms is the perfect cereal for St. Patrick's Day because of course there's the leprechaun and the rainbow and all of the marshmallows. And then to go along with this, of course, you're going to need the milk of your choice. This could be dairy milk or it could be plant-based, whatever you would normally eat with cereal. Then for a fun and unexpected surprise, you're just going to need to add a few drops of green food coloring directly to your milk and then mix it up. This is especially fun for kids. And again, it is super easy to put together, but it's still special. And you guys, here's a hint. If you can find this green box of Lucky Charms in your store, this is the kind that will automatically turn your milk green and you don't have to do any extra steps. Next up is another fun breakfast idea that takes a little bit more time than just cereal, but is still easy and super cute. For this, all you're going to need is some store-bought cinnamon rolls. But I do have to warn you, I made the mistake of buying these ones and these ones will not work because it's not actually a cinnamon roll. It's kind of like a cinnamon roll biscuit. What you actually need to make these are the kind of cinnamon rolls that actually unroll, like these ones. Now, to make these, I'm just going to very carefully unroll each of these cinnamon rolls, and then with each one, I'm going to make a small loop like this. I'm going to tear off that loop and then pinch the ends together. And with one cinnamon roll, I can actually make three of these loops with one of the loops having a bit extra, and that's going to be for the shamrock stem. And you guys, speaking of shamrock, I've had a lot of questions recently about the difference between a shamrock and a four-leaf clover and also a club. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain that to you while I'm getting the rest of these cinnamon rolls done. Basically, a four-leaf clover looks like this. Of course, there's four leaves here. These are associated with good luck, and that's why you find them in Lucky Charms. Whereas shamrocks, they only have the three leaves on them, and they have kind of a religious tie to them that relates to the Holy Trinity. And then, of course, we have the club, which isn't really associated with St. Patrick's Day, although technically the shape is a clover and has three leaves but this is the kind of shape that you find in a deck of cards. It's not really the same as a shamrock. So now back to our cinnamon roll shamrocks. These only take about 10 minutes in the oven, and then once they're done, you just have to drizzle whatever icing came with your cinnamon rolls all over them. And you guys, this part is optional, but I like to add some festive green sprinkles to the top of ours. Now, if you have a bit more time, this next breakfast idea is a really fun and colorful option. For this, you're just going to start with some waffle batter. And of course, you can use any kind or brand that you prefer. And then you're also going to need some food coloring. And you guys, for these rainbow waffles, you don't actually have to make each color of the rainbow. For mine, I'm just mixing up some pink, some yellow, some green, some blue, and some purple. And trust me, you guys, if you can use some piping bags or some little Ziploc bags for this, it's going to make your life a lot easier. 
So to my sprayed waffle iron, I'm just going to add a little bit of the batter at a time, starting with the purple in the center. For this, you kind of have to work fast. You want to make sure to get all of your colors in there. And as they kind of mix together, they're going to create more colors of the rainbow. Once the waffles are done, all you have to do is cut them in half. I like to stack them up. And then for my kids, I like to add little clouds of whipped cream to either side. Okay guys, so now moving on to some lunches. I do have a complete playlist full of St. Patrick's Day lunch ideas. If you wanna check that out, I will link it down below. But in today's video, I wanted to go ahead and show you a super easy four leaf clover quesadilla. For this, I'm just using some spinach and herb tortillas. To make these, it really works best if you have a cookie cutter. I found this one at Hobby Lobby, but you could also get these on Amazon. These are the easiest ways to cut through the tortilla and to cut the cheese. Once you have your quesadillas assembled, you can just go ahead and heat them up any way you like, and then they're ready for the lunchbox. Another fun idea is to make a shamrock peekaboo sandwich. Again, this is another super simple but special lunch idea, and it's based on the old-timey fluffer nutter sandwich, which of course is just peanut butter, and then instead of jam, you add marshmallow cream. To make this more of a St. Patrick's Day theme, I am going to add just a little bit of green food coloring to the marshmallow cream, and then I'm going to put both the marshmallow cream and the peanut butter into some little sandwiches. Now, if you don't don't have a shamrock shaped cutter, you could go ahead and use some heart shaped cookie cutters. If you're looking for a non-sweet St. Patrick's Day option that's on the healthier side, I'd recommend making these rainbow veggie wraps. Now again for these, I start with the spinach and herb tortillas. Then to this, I spread a layer of hummus, or you could use cream cheese. Next, I'm adding lots of rainbow colored fresh veggies. First some red pepper, then some carrots. Next is yellow pepper, followed by spinach, then lastly, some thinly sliced purple onion. Now I just roll this up as tightly as I can and then slice it into pieces. Now you guys, these roll ups look so pretty and they really have a fresh and a delicious taste. Now you guys, if you're looking for an even easier lunch idea on St. Patrick's Day, just think green foods. All you really have to do is gather up all of your favorite green foods and put them all into one lunch together. You don't really have to cut out anything special or make anything from scratch. It's really just the fact that your entire lunch is filled with green foods that makes it special for St. Patrick's Day. Next up is a super easy no-bake treat that I like to call leprechaun bait. For this, I'm starting with Lucky Charms, but this time I'm using the cluster variety. But of course, any kind of Lucky Charms will do. Next, I'm going to take out all of the marshmallows and I'm going to set those aside. Next to this, I'm going to add some Chex cereal, followed by some pretzels, and then I'll mix this all together. Now in a separate bowl, I'm going to melt some white chocolate wafers. Once those are completely melted, I'm going to pour the white chocolate all over and then mix it all up. Next, I'm just going to dump this onto a cookie sheet. And then before the white chocolate hardens, I'm going to be adding in some green M&Ms. And you guys, these ones are actually key lime pie flavored. I found these at Target and they are really good, but you could add any green M&M that you like. You could even add some mint ones. Next, I'm going to add back in those marshmallows. Now you guys, once the white chocolate is completely hardened, all you have to do is break up the pieces, throw it in a bowl, and enjoy. Now this is a snack that the whole family really loves. It is so easy to make, it's really customizable, and it has that great combination of both salty and sweet. 
Next up, if you want to make a green snack for St. Patrick's Day that doesn't take food coloring, definitely try these green muffins. I'll go ahead and link the full recipe down below, but basically these muffins get their color from spinach. But trust me, these don't taste anything like spinach. Even my picky eaters like these. I think these have a fruity banana bread flavor. They are really tasty and they're also plain based. Okay guys, this next idea is an edible DIY craft that is super easy for little kids to make. First, we started out by printing out some shamrocks just onto some green construction paper. Then we cut them out, punched holes at the top, and now I'm just writing the kids' names on the front of them. Next, I'm going to take some baker's twine and I'm going to loop it through the hole in the shamrock like this because we're trying to create a necklace Next, we're going to need some Fruit Loops, and this part is definitely for the kids to do themselves. All they're going to do is add the cereal in rainbow order to either side of the necklace. Now, my kids are just adding a little bit on either side, but you could fill up the entire necklace with cereal if you wanted to. Now, once you have that done, all you have to do is tie the ends together, and just like that, you have a super easy, colorful, edible craft. Now you guys, when it comes to dinner on St. Patrick's Day, we almost always make corned beef and cabbage. But I have to say one of the easiest ways to make this is in an Instant Pot. So I do have a separate video showing exactly how to make it in the Instant Pot and I'll link it down below for you guys if you want to check it out. It's not necessarily a cute recipe, but it is really easy and definitely special for St. Patrick's Day. Okay guys, last but not least, a super easy dessert that can definitely feed a crowd for St. Patrick's Day. Today I'm making a lime jello poke cake. For this, you just start by making a white cake mix and you make it just according to the directions on the box. Once your cake is out of the oven and it's had a chance to cool down a little bit, it's time to poke the holes. Now some people, when they make a poke cake, they'll just use a fork to poke all the holes while other people like to use a big old wooden spoon or a dowel to poke big holes. It's really up to you, however you prefer. Either way works fine. Next, it's time for the jello. Now, because it's St. Patrick's Day, I'm gonna be using a six ounce box of the lime flavored jello since it's nice and green, but I've also made this recipe with strawberry jello and lemon jello before, and both are delicious. So for the jello, it's just one cup of boiling water. You mix the jello in that until it's dissolved, and then you add one cup of cold water in as well. Once that's mixed all together, you just pour this mixture all over the cake and let it soak in. Now, I think this cake is best if you can let it set up in the fridge for at least four hours, but the longer the better, and I always serve this cake chilled. Right before I serve it, however, I do like to add a special topping. To keep this really easy, I'm just combining one can of cream cheese frosting with one tub of Cool Whip topping. Once I have the two mixed together, I just spread it out all over the cake. And then of course, this part is also optional, but you guys know I love sprinkles. So I'm gonna be adding plenty of green ones all over the top. Now this cake is sweet, but it's also a little bit tart with just a light lime flavor. It's not overpowering on the lime. And the best part is that this cake was really easy to make. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Happy St. Patrick's Day!